We are in Israel, retracing Jesus' footsteps. Today, we'll visit the house of his childhood, the house of the Virgin Mary, and a place not everyone knows about, but he definitely did. Ah, veremos qué sucede. Estoy un poco nervioso. So before we set off on our three-stop tour, our tour guide invited us for a quick hop-off in Nazareth. <laughs> As we walk through the aisles, I can't avoid to feel this kind of clash deep inside my heart. I mean, this cross is more famous than the McDonald's logo, but the way they profit with it is bittersweet. Check this one out. Pure in art, the very same Mary Magdalene anointed the feet of Jesus with. Four for 10 bucks. Let's rewind to the beginning of the biblical times. Nazareth was a small town to the north of Israel, at the core of a Jewish community in a rural area, and its population was barely a few hundred people. Nazareth was a humble city, that was its hallmark, a low-key city. It lacked political appeal, lacked economic and religious relevance. Why do you think Nathaniel, one of the first disciples, said what he said when he was told they found the Messiah in Nazareth? The guy was speechless. Nazareth. <laughs> that is what my wife Sophie and I thought we'd find. Imagine our surprise when we realized Nazareth was no longer a teeny tiny town. This is how Nazareth looks like today. Nazareth has flourished immensely and it has evolved into the biggest city in the northern region of Israel. Nazareth is one of the most diverse cities in the region, with one of the largest Arab communities and a well-developed infrastructure. What once was an ordinary town has become a great city today. It is another story for the city of Capernaum, a city by the Sea of Galilee that saw Jesus start his ministry, a city that used to be a mega city and today looks like a ghost town. But that is actually what our next video is about. Today is going to be about Jesus' childhood in Nazareth. The tour guide gives us the green light and here we are, our first stop, the house of Mary. The place where the Archangel Gabriel reached down to Mary and told her she would be the one to deliver the deliverer. Wow, humbling, isn't it? Look at this place. The luxury and splendor of a place that's been stood up to celebrate and preserve a small modest cave. The Cave House of Mary, also known as the Grotto of the Annunciation. According to tradition, visitors can come inside to the Basilica and take a tour around to the Cave House that's been carefully preserved for centuries. Now, I know you're probably frowning at me all judgy and thinking, how are you so sure this was the actual house of Mary? How can you be so certain after all these years? Well, I told you, Nazareth has always been a small town, right? It's not like you have a panoply of options, but here's an interesting fact. Our guide says the cave house was bricked up, kind of closed off in the 4th century, which definitely helped keep it intact to this day. Are we 100% sure this is the exact place? No, we're not, but I choose to believe. I want to share the adrenaline with you. The story of Jesus changed my life. Being here in Israel is a dream come true for me. And if Bethlehem is episode 1 of this saga, this humble shrine, the cave house of Mary, is definitely the prequel. The young virgin received the great news here. The biggest love story in the history of mankind was about a star. Let's take a step back and go to Nazareth where our next stop awaits. The house of Joseph. The house that saw Jesus grow up. Check this out. See the Basilica of the Annunciation? We said that was the house of Mary. And only a few feet apart, maybe a block apart, we can see the house of Joseph. According to tradition, Mary was visited by Archangel Gabriel while she was living in Nazareth. She was at home. It was after she'd received the message and embraced her purpose of bearing the Christ that Mary married Joseph and moved in with him. Because again, Nazareth was a modest city. So this kind, of, this kind of distance shows how small the town was. The Church of St. Joseph was a dwelling cave where the Holy Family got settled and where Jesus grew up in Nazareth. 
It is believed that this church was built over the remains of the home of the earthly father of Jesus Christ. And we walk into another cave, the crypt where Joseph's carpentry workshop was. I can almost see Joseph teaching Jesus how to master the craft of carpentry. I'm shocked. An ordinary cave had the honor to host a young virgin who was visited by the Archangel Gabriel. The distance between places. I'm shivering again. It's truly amazing to be here. I hope I was able to show you like 10% at least of what it feels like to be here. Many people would consider this one the last stop in Nazareth, but not us. Those who follow Jesus know there is one last place we gotta visit. And that place is Mount Precipice. The cliff where the Christ was taken and people cheered to push him from. They got up, drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. That moment was a crystal clear message. His time had not come yet. It was proof that despite rejection and despise, God was protecting his son. You can take the word of God coming alive here, taking shape. My heart can draw the image of Jesus being pushed around and dragged over to this cliff. This is an illustration of what could have happened in an instant. See how sharp these rocks are. See how steep this slope is? If somebody pushed me, check this out. Check the edge of this rocky slope. I would die in a second. But they went all the way to the top. They reached the brow of the hill and we'll do the same. I wasn't expecting this. I honestly thought we were not that far. It is a really long hike if you aim for the top. Okay, this is truly steep. Alright my friends, I can't put into words what it feels like to be here. I think this is by far the place that shocked me most. You can literally, I mean, it all comes together. The script becomes so tangible here. The sightseeing is just brutal. I really wanted to be able to come here and show you the sign that shifted Jesus' ministry. A spot that somehow redirected his ministry from his hometown to another city, where he was the carpenter's son. Look what I found. Right before we departed, I found Mount Tabor. That mound that sits over there, Gideon defeated the Midianites on that mound. The mound of the so-called Transfiguration, where Jesus was found chatting with Moses and Elijah. And the mound where King Saul consulted the witch of Ender. This is only a glimpse of the incredible stops and maps of Israel. Each tiny little mountain, each grain of dust has a story to tell. Alright folks, we're going to visit Peter's house now, which is now a church that was built over the house of the Apostle. Stay tuned for our next video, we will visit Capernaum, the city by the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus brought up his ministry before he died and resurrected in Jerusalem. Don't forget that Jesus loves you, and so do I. See ya!